Hello everyone, um, back again with another Homie and the Dude actual play stream. Um, quick shout out and some thank yous to Underground Oracle Publishing, shout out to the editing team Becky and Ben, shout out to the artist Jay, Josh, Alex, and yeah, real, really can't do this without you guys, so thank you guys. Um, and uh, last session, our players met one another, um, arrived at uh, Lacrima, from there went and begun investigating. Through their investigations, talking to the townsfolk of Lacrima, they discovered that living beneath the island they believe is a Juragar, and that this Juragar is somehow uh, injuring the tree and damaging the tr sacred tree on the island. Um, they then proceeded to go down some steps on the side of the island and enter through a cave mouth into the subterranean part of this island. As they did, they found some giant brass doors, and after Evis placed their hand on the door, some runes appeared. So through some quick deduction, the team worked out that the runes were dwarvish, and that they said, speak open in celestial. Luckily, some of the team spoke celestial and were able to open the doors by speaking Ail at the door. As the doors opened, they were presented with a dark tunnel ahead. And if everyone's saying comfortably, We'll begin. So guys, as you look at the doors spread wide in front of you, torchlight flickering uh, on the frame of the door, you see this tunnel ahead of you. Uh, the light kind of carries a little bit, but as it bends and turns, it gets uh, darker um, as you go through. Um, over to you guys. Can anyone see in the dark? It's pitch black in here. Is it pitch black? Oh, there's a bit of torch. Yeah, the a little bit. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, no one's in the dark. No, I, Rob, I can. I can see in the dark. Too. Pardon? Rob, Doing is I, the right thing. I can hear that. Sorry. Oh, so is, is your character giving off a glow too, or no? Because I thought oh, he yeah. had like a certain glow. Okay, like a little. Yeah, just like the joints a little bit, but it's like dim, very dim. Yeah. Uh. I believe Arnar can see in the dark. I mean, I we have a, see a little bit in there. I mean, perhaps yeah. if I punched a piece of flint hard enough, I could light it. But no, you I can do that. In the dark. I didn't realize you were an Earth Genasi. Well, I've never tried that, but I'm interested in trying. <laughs> That's a good philosophy. <laughs> really. <laughs> Well, you, you know what? I, I've never heard of anyone punching a flame into existence, but you know what, my, my, my dear Genasi friend, I would be delighted to see such a thing. That sounds freaking awesome. Um, like, if, if you're keen, uh, does anyone have any flint? No? It's not, not that crazy. Mostly joking. Okay. Oh, oh throw, sorry. My... Harmonica, I mean, that's not, this isn't the most crazy thing if they could do it. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, oh, oh that, that, that's fair, yeah. Um, yes. Guys, you know, I, I do just want to say, I believe that this team is really, you know, going to succeed here. I think we can do some good. I'm getting some real good vibes from this team, and I feel like, you know, with that, you know, we can go and accomplish things and, and, and hopefully help this island and, and come away, all of us feeling better about ourselves and, and about this situation. I mean, with that, everyone gets a plus one to their AC, um, and everyone, um, also, um, incre your speed increases by five feet for the next Ooh. eight hours as well, as he use his, his battle plans ability. Mm. Maybe, no, this guy's all right. to... Maybe this guy's all right. Yeah, I, I was going to say something. I was like, okay, never mind. <laughs> <fine. laughs> chill. Okay. And he, uh, uh, he turns on his heels and looks to the tunnel and he goes, um, I'm a little bit better at like, uh, 
ranged stuff. I, I typically don't get a too nitty gritty um, and kind of walks over and taps r, &R on the back. He goes, uh, would you like to go first, my friend? <laughs> I suppose I can, yes. I second that. Yeah. Amazing. So as you guys basically begin making your way um, through the tunnel, um, you can see that it kind of bends and curves. And as you kind of come around um, a curve, I'm just going to place you guys in, um, move you guys on over. Ooh. Boom. As you guys kind of make your way through this tunnel, uh, it's very eerie and kind of you can hear like dripping noises, but the one thing that you can hear now as you make your way through and it's a little bit louder is the scratching that you guys were hearing before. And it's getting a little bit louder with uh, every couple of steps that you guys take. And as you come around this corner, you come into um, a room. The room um, has a hallway at the end um, and there is a table. Um, on the far side. The far side has a casket on it, uh, like a keg, uh, with a couple of glasses. Um, and uh, can you guys make perception checks for me? Here we go. It's a roll of the Damn. session. Sorry. Um, hey, that ain't bad. Hey, that perception. Enough. Eleven. Eleven. Sixteen. Seven. 21. 14. Ooh. Two. A two. <laughs> a two. <laughs> power two. A power two. Uh, so, Blanco, you can see that on the keg, there is a small uh, piece of, uh, like, parchment that has been, like, attached to it. And on the piece of parchment, it says, drink me. Uh... uh Gang, I can see ahead of me, there is a uh, papel, some paper, and it is saying that uh, we should uh, help ourselves, we should drink, but um, I don't know how you all feel. It is a cross there on the top of the keg. Uh, I, I, I'm a little bit concerned about getting from here to there. It almost feels, uh, I don't know if it is or not, but... It's almost like it's inviting us to walk across that area. And, and I've, I've read a lot about these false invitations and sometimes they're traps and things like that. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, it, I walk when okay. you can fly. Oh. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly slowly. And as I'm coming in, I'm just going to make sure to keep everyone like at least at seven feet distance from the party. So I'm going to like make sure fly whatever I am, I'm going to make sure I'm a, like a, at least like seven feet away from everybody. Um, okay. So I'm going to fly slowly up to the air and kind of slowly fly into the room, just very cautiously. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have the to like just tackle Toad and become like a meat shield if I need to. Like just... Of course. Of course you can. Yeah. Nobody, um, nobody's hurt my friend. Campaign. So Toad, as you kind of make your way to the, the entrance of this room and you begin taking up, you begin flying in, suddenly nothing happens and you glide across the room <laughs> cautiously and very carefully. And as you reach the other side, the hallway that you're in, you can see light coming from the other end. Though um, you can also hear uh, mutterings. You can hear that kind of thing going on. I'm gonna. Can I just also say, I love that Toad made it across, but I guess what I was thinking is that the, the, the trap could be pressure based, and, and, and if we're walking across, there could be something that triggers some additional element that Toad hasn't really triggered himself by flying across. Can, it's just a thought I have. Do you want to? I can assist if you. Uh, here. Reshi! Oh, Reshi! <laughs> Your voice uh, echoes uh, around the room for a second. Um, you hear, Toad, you hear the murmurs ahead of you stop for a second, but then they continue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly you. back. I'm going to fly back. I'm slow fly. I'm going to fly as fast as I can, like just making like that gesture for just being like, push it down a little bit. Like, whoa. Um, whoa. Speed Ron, up. describe how you summon Rushy for um, the first time in front of the group. 
uh, from like my glowing like green chest, uh, snaking out is this like haku, uh, fly a fiery dragon that kind of like appears and then swirls around me and then like nestles on my tree shoulder. Um, everyone, this is Reshi, my dearest and only friend. Uh, but she's been with me for a long time, and uh, yeah. So uh, I thought she could maybe help us out, and I'd like to fiery teleport us all to the other side of the room. Amazing. I'm going to speak to Rashi in Draconic. Say hello. Yeah, I'm going to speak to Rashi in Draconic and be like, hello, Ooh. nice to meet you. Um, it only, she only understands uh, the language is that I understand. Uh, so, oh. the uh, languages that I understand. So, yeah, it's just common and... Uh, yep. Genasi, but um, yeah, she can't speak though. She's lost her voice. I don't know how. So let me just give you some confirmation. You can teleport the team 15 feet if they're willing. Yeah. 15 feet is about that far. Oh, I thought, okay. So it's up to you. You can probably get about 15 feet is about could I, there. Basically. Yeah. Could I go to the side? To yeah, totally. Or, yeah, just along the pool. What are you thinking? So if I step forward and then on the edge, so we're, we're not on the squares. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like here? Yeah, literally. Cool. Okay. Let me find your 15. So I'll stand next to Toad and then teleport us as close as I possibly can. Cool. Let me, yeah. Uh, we'll do it in two. There you go. That's as close as you can get there. Okay, sweet. Cool. Amazing. So you do teleport the team. Um, as you do, the team lands on a very thin ledge and... Uh, Arnor, Blanco. If you're all consenting, that is. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Oliver, can you guys please make uh, dex checks? Dex saving throws. Uh, saving dex throws. throws. Uh, yes. Is this against something I can see? Yes. The floor okay. falling beneath your feet. Okay, then I do have an advantage on this. <laughs> Amazing. Cool, cool, cool. Not Wait, inspiring. who's making the deck saving throw? Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, it's Blanco, Arnar, and Oliver. Oh, okay. Okay, it's a 17. 17, amazing. Um, uh, Blanco? 13. 13, okay. So to describe this to you, uh, Rom steps to the front. Um, quickly, in a flash of fiery light, you all vanish and appear at the side of the room. A couple of you bump into each other and end up kind of falling into the middle. As you do, Arnar, you kind of grab onto one of the rock pieces and manage to keep yourself up. And as Blanco begins to tumble, you manage to grab Blanco as well and, uh, and hold them up and pull them back up. Uh, however, uh, just off to your right, you see Oliver, oh, oh, whoosh, and lands uh, in a pit uh, about 20 feet down as the floor crumbles and collapses beneath him. And he's going to take... Six points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, sorry, buddy. Muchísimas gracias for for helping me, uh, Arna. You are strong to to bring me back to the edge of the ledge. Thank you. Gracias. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a fly down. But hey, are, are you okay? That was the fall you took. Oh my wind! I got. Oh my! What's it? Deep breath. Hold on. Deep breath. Hold on. Hold on. Does anyone have <sighs> anyone have any rope that we can throw down that might be able to pull pull, pull him back up? See, I have, uh, I, have in, I have hemp hemp rope in in my pack and I can take it out and here. Oh, thank thank you. Oh, oh my my bloody back! I think it slipped a disc or something. Oh, oh for freaking sh hell! Alpha, oh, grab. Oh, thank you, thank you. And he, uh, he grabs, and uh, can you make a strength check, please? 15. I'm helping to help. I'm helping with the rope. Yeah, I'm, I'm also <laughs> helping to, like, anchor the rope or something. Amazing, 19, so you can do it with advantage. Uh, 19, you, yeah, you managed to pull him up quickly, like, uses his feet on the wall. And uh, doesn't do much like scaling himself as much as just kind of letting you guys <laughs> hoist him up. And uh, as he gets there, he kind of puts a knee down. He's like, oh, Sato, are you okay, friend? His pseudo dragon drunk on his shoulder kind of lifts its head, raises a little thumb, and then droops back down asleep. 
And he's like, good, 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 good. Okay. Um, and he kind of peers down the hallway for a second. Um, uh, I've, geez. Um, okay. Well, that, that, that wasn't as I was expecting. Um, it seems like whoever's down here is, is not happy that people come and visit. Oh, um, oh and by the way, there's, we should be kind of quiet because I did hear some mumbling. Didn't really catch words, but I heard. It, well, I'm, ho I'm hoping that the, 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 the spell that, uh, that young, um, yeah, are you, are you young, uh, Mr. Um, oh God, I, I don't even know your name. Uh, Mr. Man with the tree, um, what, what is your name? Uh, my name is Ron. Greetings. Ah, uh, Dragon you, Man. Uh, it, 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 the, the spell, I believe, uh, he cast on us should mean that uh, we should be able to, uh, to, to talk freely and, 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 and hopefully uh, they, they, they shouldn't be able to, to hear us. But um, uh, that's, that's just my hope. Uh, but better to be safe than sorry, so uh, I'll bring it down an octave. Huh? Is that better for you? Toad, could you tell how many there were? Uno, dos, tres. How many? How many voices did you get? Let me let me see if I can get a closer look. I will be right back. So, or just take that in. Amazing. So, it's a deep breath. Like, uh, okay, you can do this. There's like, give yourself a pep talk. <laughs> it's like, you can do this. Does someone want? Does someone want to drink the bottle while he's gone? So, Tony, no. as, <laughs> as you go down the hallway. Um, you come, are you, show me very how far, slowly, still flying, so it's very slowly, just like, cool, cool, can you make a stealth check for me, obviously, plus 10, Ooh, yes, I can, thank you, I'm gonna play by the rules, I'm still gonna make him do the check, even though you know he's gonna pass it, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, I think, you oh, know, this, I think, I everything think, here you know. is, you've got, no, you're, you're, you're <laughs> totally fine. As, as you manage to go up to the, like, kind of up near the top of the, uh, the hallway, like, roof where the stagmites are, and you kind of make your way through them, uh, you manage to stay up in the shadows and quiet. As you come to the end of the tunnel, uh, you're greeted by this site. Let me just quickly reveal some stuff for you. You were past that trace, so love that so much. Oh, man. It's a good one, right? Mm. Oh yes, thank you. thank you for passing that trace. Thank you so oh, much. My. <laughs> so Toad, as you get to the end of the hallway, you can see in front of you a large dining table. Now the dining table looks as though it's been constructed from pieces of like kegs. Like some of the wood is like bent and curved, and you can see like metal like strips that have been straightened out um, and rehammered in, basically connecting all the pieces. The chairs are uh, very if interestingly made, and you can see one that is definitely a bar stool from the bar upstairs, um, sat at the table is a deep gnome swelling, this little gray creature with long ears, um, and it's just eating dinner. And coming up next to it is this other large gray creature with long kind of thick arms um, that like hang down by its knees. And it has like almost like a hairline that starts like far back on the head and has wispy bits of hair kind of coming down almost Gollum-esque. And this creature is bringing like a platter over to the like uh, the gnome and kind of places it down. It's like, oh, for you. Oh. And then begins kind of, making its way back um, across the room. You can see up on the platform at the far end of the room, there's another gnome sat um, at another makeshift table uh, with some sort of like board game uh, of some sorts, and they're moving pieces um, back and forth on, on, on a tiled board. Um, from the right, you can see a glowing light, and uh, you can feel a heat coming from the right, basically. All right. I'm going to let go back. James Toad, it's Bond, you know, but Toad instead. <laughs> go back very smoothly. Um, relay this to everybody. There was, I think, those Durgar creatures. Because I don't know what Durgar is. I never seen what someone imagine. Hmm. What a gnome is something like that. I think there. So some of those Durgar creatures in there, like two or three. Um, some gnomes as well in there. It's like they're eating. So this might be the best time to get the drop on them. I think. While you're saying that, um, I just sort of nuzzle up to Evis 
and uh, in, a, in a little bit of an insecure way, and I say, and just whisper, I say, hey, Evis, have you ever done one of these types of adventures before? This is, this is my first one. I just want to know uh, how you're feeling. Yeah, I've, I've not really left before. It's been, this is new. This is entirely new to me too, but I'm glad to have a familiar face with me. Yeah, it makes me it too. a little bit easier on, on the on the soul. Yeah, me too. And I go to like, I don't know, fist bump and then shake, and then it's all awkward. And I want to make some sort of connection, but I don't know how to do it. And you're just watching me. <laughs> they they take they in both of their hands. They take like right. your hands and like a like a this kind of thing, and it's it's okay. Well, we can ground each other together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. That's a lovely moment, guys, but there's some horrible cabbage or lettuce in my face right now. Can we, like, can we, like well, move a bit, please? Actually, no, yeah, I'll, I'll we, we, we must have 20 full minutes for this moment. Yes. It's only right. Yes. Per the monastery. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Can, we, can we hear that conversation going on? I know you're being quiet, but were we able to... Concerned. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I was trying to I was trying to whisper, but I'm nervous, so it's probably coming out a little bit uh, louder than I would have liked to, and it's a bit oh. echoey in here. M make make a stealth check, and and uh, I'll go everyone's passive perceptions. We'll see whether you guys hear it. And Tom, remember you have your bardic inspiration. I gave it to you last last time. I don't think you ever used it. You still got bardic yeah. inspiration. Back to Toad, real quick. Yes. Toad, do you think uh, we should go for the fast ball special? Like thirteen. Are you are you comfortable with me throwing you at full speed into the room? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, and plus the farther I get away from you guys would probably be for the I mean I can be bad luck sometimes, so well, yeah, the way maybe. I see it, if I can throw you into the room and you can cast a spell centered on those people, you wouldn't have to hover, and it would be much faster and surprising, to say the least, if a small animal were to come hurtling into the room and then explode with a massive force of spell energy. True, true. I think I might have something that can get... I have something that can help us and hinder them, so I think I got something Wait. that can... Can do the you have a massive uh, explosion of mass spell energy. This is incredible. I, I'm, I'm, oh, oh, this, this, okay, you're talking okay. about something flame. Oliver, 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 you need to be quiet. Oh, sorry. I forgot. Um, it's not that powerful, but it's, it's something, okay? Like, it's. Okay, help, well. Don't help all of us. I'm, I'm delighted to say we're talking about people punching flames into existence for explosive spell power. This group is exuberant. I'm, I'm delighted to be joining you. Now, um, as a DM, um, the people who heard um, the conversation between Evis and Sergio uh, would have been Blanco and Rom. You're the only two that would have heard the conversation. Um, uh, now, um, you, you, uh, Toad, you said there's uh, the, 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 the Jurgar in there. Well, I, I suggest, um, I, uh, just a little bit of backstory on me. I went to battle strategy. I, I kind of, it's my thing. Um, I reckon we go kind of similar to what r, &R said. Uh, we go in like a, like a triangular formation. You put the, the big people at the front and us who throw things at the back. And then uh, I like the idea of launching the Mr. Toad in there. I think that's a phenomenal idea. It's a great addition to my triangle formation. And I think actually something that we could formulate and maybe use another time. Who knows? Anyway, uh, so what do you guys think? Triangle formation? I'm not opposed. Yes. It sounds, it makes sense that we start with a bit of a wedge. One of us going in and with a lot of backup, uh, that's consistent with what, what I've read before. Should I, should I try to intimidate them as I move inward? Maybe in a show of force or something of the like? Something I, like, you are about to die. I, I'm sorry, I can't think of cool one-liners 
I'm, I'm, that, I'm not exceptional at it. Maybe Toad can say that something. That was cool. That was that was, was really I, cool. Was I, that I, good? Was that catchy? So, I'm going. Uh, you are all going to die now. I think. Okay. I think. I don't know if that was. Uh, I don't I think mean, I could put really, my T-shirt. It gets the point across. You know? It's I very clear, it. direct to the point. Yeah. Simple punches. I, guess, I am very clear, know. direct to the point. It, it it encompasses what we're kind of here to do. You know, I, I like mm. it. It's I feel direct, like it would it's work perfect. if we all said it. Oh yes, a group oh, shout, like a war cry. Yes, yes. Ah, oh, I like you it. Are, I like it a lot. It's good. You are going to die now. Yeah, that works. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's. Okay, so who? I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to go at the back and. Uh, and at this point, you see him kind of as he draws his hands across each other. Some like arcane sparks begin to like kind of uh, grow and form around his hands. He's like, I haven't done this in a while. It's been a well. Shit! Only four days. Um, okay, I'm ready. Let's let's go, team. Um, As you do that, I sort of nuzzle up to Toad and Arnar, and uh, just kind of stick my head in and say, oh, I, "I'm not sure how much we've talked about it, but it, it, if we are a trio, I just want to I just want to give you two some additional strength." And I cast Bless, but I also, at the same time, I'm trying to do the handshake that Evis gave to me and it's um it's awkwardly trying to do that and i'm trying to find toad's hand as well and uh, it's it's just not working as well as i'd like to but i do cast bless on those two is, is this meant to be a handshake um this is how we do it when we're on when we're on adventures put your hand in between mine like a little like sandwich, a little web, a little web. You feel like a clammy, yeah, <laughs> yeah, clammy yeah, yeah. Hand. Like, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, like, so like kind, of of kind of thing where we all have our hands in, and then you're just like grabbing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toad, Toad, come on, put yours in there. Yeah, right there. Okay. And then he puts his hand on top and just looks at you two and feels the energy of the trio uh, in a way that maybe no one else feels, but somehow it's real. To to Geo right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, I, I'm not sure if we, you say anything or not, but I think that's all we do. We just then turn around and we go, and we 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 try to we try to be successful in this adventure. Geo, Geo, remember, <laughs> you got this. Okay, you got this. Geo, I don't yeah. want to alarm you, but if this is your first time seeing violence, no, hey, no, it's wait, about wait, 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 let's let's no, there's. He's he just saying you got this. He's saying you got this. That's what, that's what, he's, that's what he's saying. We don't right. want to inform him that's, about we're, we're the upcoming him, horrors of violence. Him. Oh no no no! We're informing him that though things may get a little, um, <laughs> a little hairy in there. We have each other's backs. No matter what happens, we will make it out because we know what we're doing. We all have our strengths that we can use to protect one another. So. Oh, I see. We're telling him a good lie. Yes, this, this would boost morale. <laughs> you know what? This is not my mission. I am here helping you guys, so we have to make it out of here. By by all force, we shall make it out of here. Don't worry, no pass another. Don't no pass another, my little one. Okay, Big guys. One. Give me Giant a one. give me a marching order, guys. What's the uh, what's the marching order as we enter this I mean, whole life? Who's gonna probably go in first? Like he's want to go and just make sure he's like away from everybody. Cool. Go for it, Tony. Just... You can uh, go okay. for it, yeah. Evis. Yeah, go on. Evis is going to take like probably around third in the marching Amazing. order, just to be for punchies if necessary, and also for like swift escape if necessary. Yeah, I'm definitely the front of the the phalanx here, so I'm think I'm going right after Toad, uh, awesome. as I am a sack of meat. Awesome. And, and Blanca? Uh, yeah, I'm going right, to be right there with Avis because I'm sort of like got long range and short range. So, you know, and, um, you know, I can. Uh, Geo and Rob. Uh, yeah, I'll go next. I feel like I'd beat you there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's fair. Uh, Geo um, sees that. He's lost connection with Toad and Rom, and ideally he would have wanted to be connected to them going forward. Um, but yeah, he's come last just because he's slow and uh, is okay with that. So he's settling in his position next to Oliver. Amazing. Uh, so as the team kind of, you guys get ready in the hallway um, to charge, 
Um, any uh, any last things you guys do before you charge in? I'm gonna I'm gonna notice Gio kind of in the back, kind of see like a little nervousness. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fly back a little bit because I'm gonna see him just like see a little nervousness and be like, you know, let me. So I'm gonna up to the back cool. a little. Bit. Yeah. Anyone else? Are we going in? As Toad flies back to to me, I I somehow um, think about my people, and uh, I guess maybe I've been giving the wrong message to this group, but I just lean over to Toad and I say, um, Toad, uh, I'm from the Mitsuhari, and uh, we've seen things before, and I haven't been on a, an adventure, but the Mitsuhara has seen plenty, and I'm ready, and I'm with you. And it's the first time he hasn't stuttered since uh, maybe the campaign has started. Um, and um, Blanco sets himself ready, and he sets himself ready to possibly bark. And um, I'm going to say, cool. So he said, Toast us back up. I'm with you too. We're all with you. And he pulls out like a fist, like a little web, <laughs> little web fist to pound. Cool. As Pull you guys out. charge forward into the room, uh, Oliver from the rear, you can hear shouting, you're all going to die! Uh, <laughs> yes, um, what he said. As you guys charge in, um, what I'm going to say is we'll make a group intimidation check, and then can everyone please roll initiative? Can, can, I, can I cast a spell real quickly before? Because I was planning to cast like a quick little... Yeah, go possible. for it. All right, let me do... I'm going to use my reaction and bark. <gasps> Cool. Yep, definitely. You can do so too. Please do. <laughs> can I make my intimidation with strength instead of charisma? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh <my> God. <laughs> okay, I'll just. And, uh, because it's a group one, thing. Sam, you can do it with advantage. Is that all of us? Yeah. Strength and advantage, or is that just Sam? Uh, it's just Sam for intimidation. Okay. See, see, see how many of these people in the room run. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, and then does bless apply to skill checks and attacks? I think it is. Yeah, uh, yes. Mistaken? Okay. Bless is yeah, I think so. I believe so. All right. So in total, that is a nineteen for me for intimidation. Nineteen. Right. Amazing. Um, Rolled a fifteen. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Ooh. So. Well done. Cool. So as you guys charge into the room screaming, you all are gonna die. You see instantly the general, the, the, the short gray fellow at the table instantly like erupts from his chair and starts getting up. You can see the one at like the, on the ledge um, turn and like look at you guys. Um, the kind of creatures that are walking around like this kind of more slowly are like, Ugh, and, uh, and kind of turn and, uh, and, and look at you guys. Um, First up on the initiative is wrong. Nice. Um, I'm going to. What? Can I move through you guys, or is that like a? Yeah, you at? can. Yeah, you can. Okay, yeah. So next to R and R, or can I make it all the way over to that grey-looking fellow? This one. Uh, yeah, right in front of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'll go over to him. Yep. Um, and I will. Oh, is it an action to unsheath my great sword? Uh, it's a bow, no, it's an object actually. Object, yeah, so I use my, I take my great sword off my back that was like wrapped in my branches so it couldn't really be seen. Um, and I will like uppercut this map, uh, this guy. Nice, go for it. Uh, and I'll shout, well, you will die, or prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ota. I look back and thumbs up to the rest of the guys. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm so slow. Is it 2d6 oh, yeah, or? That's good. Oh, four plus. Did, did you hit? What was no, it? It's four. So that's oh, what I hit. Yeah, I missed yeah. completely. So you miss. So as you pull out and you swing, uh, the grim, uh, the, the the creature, though it's like it turns like uh, it sees you swing and like actually swiftly moves its foot to one side and your great sword clangs against the rock ground as you s just miss it and it looks it's like uh, that wasn't very nice. Um, do oh. they have to do anything with the, because uh, they have to be frightened with my bark? Does yes, that... I have to make my rolls, yeah. Um, I believe that's, is that on their turns or just at the beginning? It says, um, for a, every time it's their turn, each person or 
cool. enemy that was 30 feet. Cool, well. I'll, I'll roll it on their turns. Thanks. Amazing. Cool. Um, anything else, Rom? Uh, yeah, I'd like to fire and teleport behind him. Amazing. That's a bonus action. So that's um, 1d6 plus some PB. What's PB mean? Sorry. Uh, proficiency bonus. Oh, sweet. Good. So two. Sorry. Five plus two, um, seven. Amazing. Uh, so as you fiery teleport, describe how it uh, how it gets him. Um, right, so um, from Reshi, who's like wrapped around me, like fire doesn't go out, but it goes in. Uh, and then it's like a blast as I like disappear and then reappear behind him. As the flames hit me, he's like, Aah! and he kind of begins to like cower away as the flames uh, lick towards him. Um, cool, next up on the initiative is Tobe. I'm gonna kind of stay back and I'm gonna, the one that Rom kind of interacted with, I'm gonna hit a very, very sharp note on the harmonica in that the creature's gonna get kind of sucked back to a horrible memory of something that he did wrong, some kind of terrible thing in his past. Um, he's gonna have to make a, uh, what is that gonna be? A charisma saving throw. Cool. What spell is this? There's Edge. Oh, dang. Um, cool. What's the DC? What did you roll? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and, and it was the first saving throw, so it's a 17. Oh, yeah, he did pass, so it takes half damage. So awesome. this is going to be. Let's see, not too much. Well, 2d8. Okay. So 11, so then 5, because the round's down, so it takes 5 points of psychic damage. 5 points of psychic damage. Amazing. So, as you hit this sharp note on the harmonica, the creature goes, and you see blood begin to come out of its nose as it slowly collapses to the ground and then just becomes unconscious uh, from the piercing sound. One down, guys. Well Ooh. done. Damn. Excellent. Um, cool. Toad, anything else on your end? Um, I was going to fly because I have a slow fly, so I'm just going to sure, just make sure I'm kind of away from the group a little bit, like at least five feet or more from uh, the group. Go so, yeah, for it. Eight foot, so yeah, it's like a little cool. in the air. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. So uh, from there, um, Gio, over to you. Um, Gio, although was sort of feeling like this was something he was ready for, he realizes when he sees that creature burning, um, it's real. And uh, he has a little bit of a panic, so he drops to his knees and is ready to go into his shell, um, but sees Toad start his harmonica sound and thinks that that's a signal to start whistling um, as part of the band. Um, so. He is panic whistling and while he's in his shell. Um... <laughs> right, so you've just done your shell retraction. You've just gone. No, no, I haven't gone, I haven't gone all the way in. I'm, okay. just, I'm just down, but I, I may go in. But I guess what I do see is that, uh, um, that Rom is ahead of me and I um, cast Bless to Rom as well. And I'm a little bit panicky. I'm not in my uh, shell yet. Where you are, you don't currently have line of sight. I don't have line of sight. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I'm still panic whistling, um, not re not really doing well right now. And, and I'm, I'm, um, gonna, I'm gonna, if I can, I'm gonna accompany him. I'm gonna hear him whistling and accompany him with the harmonica, try to like match yeah. like, and accompany on top of it, just, if possible. My, my whistling sounds sort of like. Your <laughs> 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 harmonica, your harmonica, like just like going like going with your note. You hear harmonica just kind of like. Going like just like just on top, like an octave higher, but just like kind of playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Um, cool. Next up is Arn. All right. Uh, to the surprise of nobody, I am going to focus, or as the common parlance of our time states, rage. <laughs> um, do you want to describe how that goes for you, or uh, does does that yep. look like anything? It does. Uh, Arn uh, sort of calms himself and if, if we had like an r, r cam all noise would fade in the background as he deeply inhales and as he exhales his pupils just dilate as he takes in everything around him 
and like Robert Downey Jr.'s Sherlock Holmes-esque style with all the math floating around his head and shit. Uh, so he's, he's ready to kick some ass. So Arnar rages, and then he's gonna attack uh, this dude right here. Um, I think I can make it there, right? If I can. Let yes, me. I can. Yeah, boy. For sure, for sure. Uh, so that's rage. Uh, so I am going to run uh, kind of through these chairs almost uh, past Rom. Uh, just kind of dragging my maul against the ground to create some sparks. Uh, and then I'm going to try to hit this guy. Am I still blessed? I you are it blessed. was blessed. I'm blessed? You are blessed. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to make a maul attack. Moi malo, as they say. Um, well, with bless... Oh, okay. That's 14 to hit. That is indeed a hit. Oh, thank God. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna damage this guy. Uh, so, that is 12 points of damage, and then I'm going to use my um, cool subclass features for a subclass that I made. So, totally not pat myself on the back here. Uh, and I totally didn't break it to destroy your game. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I am going to use the Calculated Blows feature, and what that does is I can do a bunch of different things to my enemies, uh, equal to 1 plus my proficiency bonus times per long rest. And I'm going to use the Fracture uh, sub-option, which means yeah. the target now has a minus 1 penalty to all attack rolls until it completes a long rest. Minus 1 Let me write that down. It's pretty spicy. Dang. Oh, hold on. I didn't... No, my bad, my bad. I can't do that because I didn't take the attack at disadvantage. So I can't do that yet. I was wondering, I was like, wait, no, I have to do something before I do that. Uh, say? but... No. I don't do that. I just hit him for 12 points of damage. <laughs> awesome. Sorry, yeah, 12. 12. Wow, I'm having a morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, amazing. As, uh, as r, r makes his way through the table, <laughs> You smash down, and uh, he had a hand on the table. You completely crush his arm underneath your mole. And he's like, ah, ah, as he kind of pulls the arm back. And you can see now it's almost like Harry Potter floppy as he kind of like retracts it from under your mole uh, as you lift. It appears uh, you're now unarmed. Ah, uh, yeah, ah. Uh. He's <laughs> armless. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Anything else from Arnor this turn? No. Incredible. Uh, next up on the list is Evis. Okay. Evis is ready to fully kick some ass. Um, so, let's see. What is my speed? I have to remember where to find it in this format. Great. Found it. So 40 feet from here is... Ugh. Oh! Hey, is number dead two... On. Dead on. Yeah. So I'm gonna go straight up. I just like... Um, Evis locks eyes across the way with this baddie over there and just is like... This is... You're my target now. The Maybe? goddess Alia has told me it is your time. Um, and then they are going to spend a key point to do... Hold on. Yeah, we're going to... So, oh my god, hold on. Wait, back up. I forgot how to play a... I've never played a monk before, actually, so give me like two seconds while I reread. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. So, okay. I so I am just gonna go ahead and unarmed strike. Just boom. Um, awesome. on this boy, and boy, that is going to be a twelve to hit. Twelve does not hit. That's fine, because yeah. I'm gonna spend a key point and flurry of blows. Um, awesome. so then I get to do one more. Seven does not hit. <laughs> Nope. And a 12 does not hit. Dang. <laughs> so, you're just, you're just warming up. 
as you rush across and you inform this uh, the, this creature that he is your target, um, he kind of like frightfully points at himself, steps up from the chair, like backs to the wall. As you come up and throw like a quick three punch combination, he has some quick head movement and is able to just dodge as your fist collide with the rock behind him, chipping away uh, bits of stone as you do. I was just testing you and you passed. <gasps> However, oh. next time, it's on. Like, I, 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 I'm glad, because that time I really thought it was on. I was just, oh. Okay, it's on like a big, you know, like the, the big, 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 uh, you know, monkey man. Took a princess. I forget his <laughs> name. It's on like I, that. I haven't been outside for a while. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, amazing, cool. Next up is Blanco. Um, Blanco is going to use an action to ready his longbow, mm -hmm. and he is going to um, take two. Can he take sort of steps to the side to go around Evis so that he, um, he can fire his longbow at the this one? Yeah. Yep. There. Yep. Amazing. So as you come around the corner, you can now see a new section of this room that I will reveal for you now. That is what you can now see. Crikey. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm still going to do my um, longbow attack um, and try and hit with my longbow. Cool. Um, just for you guys' information, this, the area that Blanco now has seen is, um, it's a kitchenette area, a crudely made kitchen with pots and pans that are dented and, uh, and broken. There's a small fire in the corner that has like a, a rudimentary like grocery system kind of made over it. You can see some cabinets and bits and bobs um, kind of um, made into the stone basically and they've attached some like crudely made wooden doors to them and things like that. Um, and in there you can see another one of those like creatures it's like this uh, but he's got like an apron on and the apron uh says welcome to lacrima um and as he turns around blanco you can see that he's not really wearing any trousers like the other ones and he's just got like his, his bum is kind of visible behind his apron as he uh, as he turns oh um, oh, oh. i've got my bow and i'm going to try and shoot past at this. At this one. At that one. Yeah, cool. Go for it. Oof. Oof. Uh, seven. Does not hit. No. Okay. Um, None of us can hit today. And right. it, um, for some reason, I'm like not really. The, the shock of the guy behind me and his nakedness under his. Um, apron, sort of. I like. I'm not concentrating, and I fire up and clangs off the uh, clangs off the roof, and uh, just just misses. Um, cool. Anything else from Blanco this turn? Yeah, Blanco then wants to come round uh, down a couple of feet because he's still and sort of like be in ready position yet to and and stores his longbow. Cool. Awesome. Um, cool. Next up is Ulfur. Awesome. Ulfur is going to step forward into the room. Um, as he does, he is going to. One moment. Just... This has got a hit. Come on. Cool. So. He is going to begin casting a spell. So let me just get this right. Self punishment minus strip one four and a half five feet one plus. Don't you choose each creature must make victory. Cool. Okay. Let me uh, let me make my saving throw quickly. And then I'll describe it to you guys. Um Oh Jesus Christ, I'm not sure if I've got enough D six around for this. Ah. Um got a couple of you. Let me Oh. Yes, Sam. Were you gonna say something? Uh, I, I was. I was thinking like, whoa, is this is this fireball? It's a lot of damage. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know why you're always probably sleep. Uh, uh that's color spray. Five, 17. Amazing, 17. Um, so, um, let me just work out. Yeah, okay, cool. So what happens is you see Ulfur kind of step forward. And as he does, he kind of straightens his coat, pulls the bottom of his waistcoat tight, steps in a wide stance. And as he does, he begins casting. And as he cracks his hand forward, a blast of lightning comes out of his hand and goes right across the room. The ball goes as it crackles across the room and hits uh, the gnome. As it goes through the gnome, and ripping a burnt, like scorched, almost like a cauterized wound straight through the center of him, it hits the back wall as rock erupts in different directions. Um, Arnar, can you please make a dexterity saving throw for me? Did he just cast lightning bolt? He, it, he indeed did. Oh, holy shit. Yeah, this, yeah, this guy's a little higher level than us. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, uh, I do get advantage because it is something I can see. Uh, so, uh, oh, please, Lord. Oh, that isn't great. That's an 11. An 11. Amazing. Uh, with an 11, uh, you, you quickly, like, shield yourself as some of the rock comes your way, um, and you take, um, one point of piercing damage from a shard of rock as it, uh, as it hits you. Oh, oh, thank god. I was, uh, I was like, oh my god, am I gonna take the full brunt of this? I might die. <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay. Okay. Quarterizes a hole through this gnome. Uh, as he was kind of sat in the chair and he was holding his arm, he just kind of topples to the side and falls out of the chair uh, completely toasted. And you can see the uh, smoke kind of just coming off of, uh, of, of his body. Olafur then goes, ha, not much of a, uh, well, well, you know, there we go. <laughs> um, and uh, and with that, he is then going to, let me just confirm this as the final thing. No, that's it, cool. And with that, he's going to end his turn. Um, cool. Next up, and we're now into the actual initiative order, guys. That's the surprise round over, so we're actually now into the initiative order. Uh, Ram and Rashi, over to you. Nice. Uh, I'd like to move forward to, uh, closer to the blank so take all my movement, like, I'll walk across the table and everything. It's like, it's not even there. 30 feet is there. 35 plus the 5 for a mother. Yeah, so. of course, yep. There you go. Sweet. Um, and I will, like, Tip uh, my mask to Blanco and then cast Burning Hands on the two in front of me. Hell yeah. Like, yeah. this is your time. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can't Go do for much. It. Go for it. Uh, I have to make a deck save, don't I? I believe, I believe so. so. Let me see. Yeah. Um, creature. Creature, you. Oh, uh, wait. Wait, no, that's Cure Wings. Ha ha ha. There we go. Deck saving throw. Yeah, for both of them. Yeah. What's your DC? Uh, I rolled a 9 and a 16. Sweet, I'm pretty sure. Where do I find my DC? Sorry. Double check the code. Is it? 13. Mm -hmm. So one hits, one doesn't? Um, 9 and a 13. Yes, right? yeah. Yeah, I rolled a 16 and a 9. Okay, yeah, so one hit, one doesn't. It's so amazing. Which one do you want to hit? I think it's smart for the first one. Close one? Yeah, that makes sense. Go for it, describe um, it. Yeah, so um, out of my hands, I drop my greatsword uh, like it's not even anything. Like I'm focusing on, this is like the thing I love to do. Uh, and like a wave of heat just come emanating from my body. Like if you were standing behind me, there would be like nothing. Uh, you'd be like shaded, I guess. But everything out kind of like comes pouring out of me. Uh, and like the wooden parts of me are charred and like still on fire, basically. And I like tap out my uh, antlers that are still on fire. Yeah, as I do 12 points of damage to this uh, guy. 12 points of damage? Yeah. Uh, as the flames hit him, he retreats backwards and accidentally impales himself on some of the cave wall. You can see he's like, ah, ah, as he slowly goes limp and falls dead as well. Um, and then I will uh, turn to Blanco and be like, would you like some assistance moving forward? And I'm like a bit frightened by this fire. It's, oh, you know, it's scared me. It's, it's sort of brought about a bit of a flashback and um, 
as much as I want to answer him, I'm just sort of at that moment, just like really struggling to, to focus and, and be a part of like that conversation. Oh, oh, okay. And then I'll send Reshi to uh, go help Shelby or Gio um, and like help him. So if he like wants to move forward, he can use the teleport to move further along. Cool. Awesome. So yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, next up is Toad. Well, I'm gonna fly forward ten feet, more into the room. Uh, and can I? I already have part of inspiration. I can have it on two people at once at the same time because it doesn't necessarily say that I can't. I can have. Yeah, uh, I can okay. Give it. You can give it to multiple people. Yeah, you can give it to multiple people. Sure. We need it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a spell. That's just a feature. So, it's not a concentration. Yeah, it's not a concentration. You're all good. I'm gonna do things at once, so I'm gonna throw Mark up again and it's like it automatically flips up. I'm gonna play a loud kinda it's it's a building song, so it's a solo, so it's building almost like a like a like a storm. Um you kinda hear like this and like almost like, what you think they might hear thunder. I'm gonna cast chords of sights at the one um, in front of Evis, and I'm also gonna do part mm-hmm. of reach with that same song as well. So it's almost like a almost like being like Rocky theme song as well, just something that's gonna get like a fire going. So Nice. Yeah, awesome. I love it. Ooh, what's that? And then I got the bless too, so definitely use my bless as well. Okay. Plus. Oh, man, 16? Does 16 hit? Oh, a 16 hits. Oof, I was like, oh my god, okay. <laughs> Alright, let me get that. That's gonna be. Ooh, you about to take some damage here. Okay, I'm I just lost, lost the D8, it's but you know what? I have another one, so. Number t- 9 took half damage, so you took 6 points of damage already. Ooh. Number so 9 took a- half damage. So that's going to be 11 points of thunder damage, and so, yeah, and so it kind of visual, so as I play this music, it gets louder and louder, um, almost crescendos, and just like it looks like. Um, just like almost like wisp of like air, just like it's come rolling right past Memphis. It is right into him, just boom, boom, boom. With this kind of thunder as it hits. As it does, they're silent as they go past Memphis, but as they hit, sound erupts, almost like he's being hit by each one. Um, as he staggers backwards, how much damage was it? it was a 11 points of damage. 11 points. Uh, you can see uh, he, he kind of, as the last one hits, drops to a knee and then kind of steadies himself. Re gets back up to a three. He's like, ah, geez, guys. And uh, and yeah, anything else from Toad? So I got, the, like I said, I got that Bardic Inspiration for Evis, and yeah, that's in that attack. Awesome. Uh, so- Evis, like, looks around, you know, at trying to figure out where all of this came from, and they're like, uh, well, thanks for missing me. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> Amazing. The gnome in front of uh, Evis is now going to take its turn. So with that, um, it is going to... Yeah, it is going to pull out its, uh, its pit, and it's just going to swing at your kneecap, basically. Chopping for the Yes, make in the tech. Uh, that is a uh, 14 to hit. That misses. Hey. Thank you. Plus one bonus to AC. That oh, wouldn't have missed before. <laughs> so as he swings his pick, you jump over it and manage to clear it. As he ends up over this way, he's like, ah, ah. And, uh, and with that, he's then going to... I think, I think I imagine this in my head of that he would try and like like try and get away from you, but you're kind of just right there and the table's there and he's like, ah, and he can't really go anywhere. So he's gonna just end his turn in the same spot, like, oh, oh, kind of thing. What, um, what, what? <laughs> next up is Gio. Uh, I'm hearing all this stuff going on. I'm seeing people move around and and, and I can see Evis up in the distance and Toad has come and gone and, and all of my, my team is doing things and I need to start doing things, so I start moving forward um, out of my prone position, and I'm, 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 I'm moving slowly, but I am moving forward. And I say, Evis, I'm coming! And um, 
of course it's very slow, uh, but I am making progress forward. <laughs> and uh, I stopped, yeah, right about there, right about the other cor the corner of the table to the right. Yeah. Yeah, and then I um, realized that I'm not going to get there in time for any of the interaction that's happening, so I cast Spiritual Weapon at this point. And um, so I am um, standing for a minute and conjuring up a vision of my Uncle Ace, and particularly the visions that and the stories that people have told me about Uncle Ace is about him just being supernatural as a turtle. And he has his lucky glove that he wears everywhere. It's almost like a Michael Jackson glove, but it's his power glove. And it's, it's, it's termed as a power glove. And so I'm picturing that power glove, and I'm picturing it sort of drifting forward to help Evis. And, uh, and as it gets closer, I want to form this glove into a punch and, um, and uh, relieve Evis of any danger right now. Amazing, love that. That's that so is sweet. That is awesome. Go for it, Tom. Roll. Uh, you you can make a melee attack, a melee spell attack. So it's Reshi's uh, also chirping. You can move fifteen feet further if you want to. No, nah, it works as fast as I, as, as far as far as I'm gonna get. <laughs> cool. So you've got Tom. Whatever you roll, plus four. So I got twenty-one. Twenty-one hits beautifully. The strongest hit of the in combat so far. Go on. Yeah, so um, my glove, and I'm just concentrating. All I can picture is, uh, is is Uncle Ace connected to the glove, actually. It's not. He's not. Um, but I picture him connected to it, and I picture him doing some sort of superhero, like almost like a Superman punch, um, lunging forward and just punching this creature right across the jaw, perfectly across the jaw, and an almost like a knockout type technique. Um, it is Uncle Ace doing it. It's not me doing it. And uh, I'm just, it's, I'm almost in a daydream. Um, just watching him do that. 1d8, go for it. Warrior 1d8 force damage. As your spectral weapon. That's an 8. Nice. Um, hang on, 1d8 plus 4. So it's 12. 12. Oh, sorry, uh, it's plus 2. Plus 2. Plus 2. Amazing. Um, so 8 plus 2 is 10. 10. Amazing. So, um, with that, um, Yeah, with, with that, um, describe that to me, Tom. That's the, uh, describe de describe how you finish this, this note. Go for it. Okay, so Uncle Ace, it's all Uncle Ace right now, and I'm picturing that he is literally there, and he, he, he vaults up onto that top platform, jumps onto the table, and in this almost like, you know, like an NFL athleticism, just throws all of his weight into this creature and I'm just sitting there looking at him. I'm actually not very protected because I'm almost uh, inspired by, and I got a big smile on my face by what Uncle Ace is doing. Um, and he smashes this guy's head. His fist hits the guy's head and his head hits the wall and his fist keeps going against the guy's head as it goes through his head into the wall. Amazing, you hear a crunch as a and the gnome becomes limp around, your fit, uh, around the spectral fist. Um, as it's relieved, his body crunches to the ground, lifeless. Um, at this point... Can I just um, say, I, I just uh, yell out, Evis, uh, that, that's Uncle Ace! <laughs> and he, he might want to say hi! <laughs> hi, uh, hi, Uncle Ace. <laughs> and then I go They're like this. They're very confused. I symbolize our handshake, I go like this. Oh, 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 oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. At They're still point, a little confused. <laughs> Can we see? So do we see the fist, or do we see the whole? Do we see? Do we see him? Well, just the fist. Or is it all you see is the fist, but I see Uncle Ace. I see the whole like action scene, but it's just the fist that that's going across the room. Uh, glowing. Uh, it's a glove. It's actually a power glove. A glowing leather leather glove that smashes him in the uh, smashes him in the face. Um, with that, guys, we're actually going to exit um, initiative. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of the Skyrim. We really hope you enjoyed the players getting into their first bit of combat. Next episode, the players will be interrogating one of the creatures under the island to find out a little bit more about this subterranean cave. We really hope to see you then. 
If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the YouTube, follow us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. Otherwise, we have a Discord community which you can join. There will be a link in the description for all of those things, guys, as well as all the players and all the artists as well. So thank you so, so much. We hope to see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.